praising God, worshiping Him together with our worship team. It's always so faithful. Praise the Lord. Let's sing. Amen. That's right. Why don't we stand to our feet? Love to sing our praises to our wonderful Lord. Amen. Let's put those hands together. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. One more time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Put those hands together. Amen. Put your hands together. Amen. Sing after me. Adonai, one more time. Adonai, when the Spirit of the Lord shout it out, I will sing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord this morning. Why don't we stand to our feet and continue to worship our wonderful Lord? Keep those hands going. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Put those hands together. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so let's continue with Jim and Amy and the worship team. Let's continue to praise the Lord and worship Him. Amen. Yes, praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together. Everything that has breath, praise our wonderful Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Adonai, you are Lord. Amen. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Put your hands together. Sing one more time. Amen. Praise you, Lord. We'll stand and dance and, and praise the Lord. Let's dance before him. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Keep those hands going. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're looking forward to that day. We have a new song for you. You are good. Praise the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 And I will say amen. Amen. And with that, worship team, I'm done. Thanks, Dana. All right, let's stand, get our hands clapping, our feet stomping. Let's praise the Lord again this morning. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Good to see you all here. Let's all clap together and worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. And with that, Jim, I'm done. Enough is enough. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. And with that, Jim and worship team. Thank you, worship team. And with that. Worship team. Let's begin, the, as we always do, praising God, worshiping Him together with our worship team. It's always so faithful. And so let's continue with Jim and Amy and the worship team. I want to thank the worship team, as always, for being so faithful. Enough of me, Jim. I went on too long. I'm sorry. And with that, worship team. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the worship team. Every moment. Where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it, I couldn't see it. There was Yeshua. There was Yeshua. There was Yeshua. He's Yeshua. Good morning, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. 
we want to welcome all of you, you that are here and you who are watching us on live stream right now. It's good to be here on a Saturday Shabbat morning. We welcome all of you to our congregation, Shuvi Israel, taken from Hosea chapter 14, verse 1. Shuvi Israel, the first two words there mean return of Israel to the God of, we say to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through Yeshua, Jesus our Messiah, and that's what this congregation is all about. So this morning we want to welcome all of you. If you're home, let's begin by worshiping together. Let's all stand and, so, and worship the Lord together. Those hands together. Sing after me. Be the metzar karatia.
we thank you for another time we get to worship you here this morning. Praise and worship, and we thank you, Lord. We ask you again to go before us and fill this place with your spirit, Lord. We want to hear from you, less of us, more of you. We thank you for it. We just look forward to spending this time with you, Lord. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, Lord God. Oh, Lord, we're just so thankful to you for this time. Just even the, the mere privilege of being able to gather together to worship you that is no longer taken for granted these days. And we're just so thankful for this time. And we're thankful for Shabbat, which faithfully comes once a week. And, uh, and we just are so grateful because there is much uh, happening around us to rest from. But we thank you, Lord, for this time of rest as we give to you our most heartfelt Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malchuto Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adoneinu, Kadoshemo, Kadlul Adonai Iti, Unaroma Mashmo Yachtav. One is our God, great is our Lord, holy is his name. Exalt the Lord with me and let us extol his name together. Amen. And Shabbat Shalom to all of you. It's so great to see you and you. And uh, first of all, I do want to thank you for making Queen Esther feel so welcome last week. <laughs> And uh, she just really so much enjoyed all of the praise and adulation that you gave to her. And she looks forward to it next year. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, I stand before you as a, as a mere peasant, <laughs> as, as we all are. <laughs> And yet at the same time, in, in the Lord's eyes, we are part of that royal priesthood, which is nice to remember. With that said, let's go ahead and recite together Psalm 116. And this is the full version of a nice, long, and hearty psalm. So let's enjoy this. This is one of my favorites. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. 
I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you. And Lord, with Micha Mocha, and um, another time just to glorify him. And he is definitely above all, above all gods, above everything. And um, we will start um, actually saying the translation responsibly, and then we will sing. This particular version, you know, Micha Mocha is one of those uh, Hebrew prayers that has many melodies, and this particular one, I would say, is, cant is in a cantorial style, so I think you'll recognize it when we start it. Who is like you, Adonai, among other gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in praises, doing miracles? With a new song, the ones you rescued praised your name at the seashore, all of them in unison gave thanks and praised your rule and said, The Lord Adonai will reign forever and ever. Amen. Okay, and we will chant this together um, and uh, just follow, follow along with me. Mi ha mo ha baeli madonai mi ka mo ha ne dar ba kodesh no rajhi lord o se be. Shira Hadisha, Shibuku Gehulim, Leshim Hasapatayam, Yahad Kulam, Hodu Vihim Lihu Vihameru Adonai Lo. Amen. And now for our Torah portion, which is from Exodus chapter 34, verses 29 through 35. And our Brit Chadashah portion is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 18. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamavorach, Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Leolam Baher, Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Leolam Baher, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Haamin, Benatan Lanu et Torato, Baruch Adonai Notein Hatora. Amen. It came about when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand as he was coming down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because of his speaking with him. So when Aaron and all the sons of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers in the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all the sons of Israel came near, and he commanded them to do everything that the Lord had spoken to him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take off the veil until he came out. And whenever he came out and spoke to the sons of Israel what he had been commanded. The sons of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. So Moses would replace the veil over his face until he went in to speak with him. And now the Brita Chadashah. 
Therefore, having such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech and are not like Moses, who used to put a veil over his face so that the sons of Israel would look intently at the end of what was fading away. But their minds were hardened, for until this very day at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because it is removed in Messiah. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their heart. But whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher natan lanu torat emet, V'chaye olam nata betocheinu, Baruch atah Adonai, Notein haTorah. Amen. And you may be seated. So much Joyce and Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Oh my goodness, there's no echo today. Can we maybe try that again? You know, it's sunny, it's beautiful out this March 6th. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. All right, that's good. The doors are open and we do have people here. So for the live streamers, we do have people here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Shuva Yisrael. We're so glad you're here worshiping with us this morning. And as I mentioned, it's, the, it, uh, it's March 6th, the first Shabbat of, of the month. And we are, uh, we're happy to have the doors open. We're happy to be live streaming. And uh, we're just glad that we can worship the Lord together. So thank you. And uh, just wanted to continue to uh, uh, mention that if you'd like to help out uh, with our live stream broadcast, if you're interested in helping, please see Jim White, our uh, worship leader and uh, youth leader. And uh, also, uh, we uh, today... We, last week was Purim, and we mentioned that uh, there's two times during the year when we take benevolence offerings. So in your bulletin today, you do have two envelopes. One is for benevolence. So if you didn't get a chance last week to uh, donate for benevolence, we have an envelope there. If you, if you want to donate to benevolence, go ahead and put it in the envelope. Mark on the envelope or on your check that it is for benevolence. And uh, for your regular offering, just put it in the uh, pushkey box in the, in the lobby and do the same with your benevolence check. If you're giving online, you can also, if you'd like to give for benevolence uh, today, there is, a, there is a place online where you can go ahead and type in benevolence. Uh, those benevolence offerings are uh, utilized by the board to be able to help our people. And we are just so joyful when we're able to use those funds to help our people and the people who receive those gifts are very joyful as well. So thank you for your continued support for our congregation. And uh, it's been wonderful uh, over this, can you imagine, over the past year we've been, uh, been dealing with this pandemic. But even during this, the Lord has been so faithful in supporting this congregation. Absolutely amazing. So whether you're donating online whether you're giving here uh, in our Pushki box uh, or whether you're mailing in your offering envelopes to our office. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, uh, for helping us. And with that, let's see. Um, Austin, Austin, you're going to come up because you have, a, you have a late announcement. We decided that it would be better if he came up and, and went ahead and uh, did, the, did this particular announcement. The floor. Oh, thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. Man, giving up your seat is the announcement. I, you know, whatever. Quite a, You're a good man. Wow, humble right there. <laughs> if you don't know, my name is Austin Kustik on the live stream as well. Um, I just want to come up here because about a year and a half ago, 
uh, me and Jim got together because we recognized that as more and more high schoolers were graduating into college, um, early college age, and then even after college, there was this growing, growing group of, of young people here at Shuva, and we saw that there was a need for more of a communal aspect, a more of a, a fellowship group aspect. So we decided to create this, what we call Kesher Fellowship. Now, Kesher in Hebrew means connection, and that's exactly what we're trying to do with this. We're connecting, coming together, taking a hit in the pause button out of our lives, coming together, connecting together, fellowshipping for a little bit. Uh, we've tried to do it on the first or second weekend uh, of the month, just to come together and enjoy, enjoy each other, and then go back to our lives. But it's mainly just for there for connection. And so um, for the past year and a half, we've been building this. We've been able to do Shabbat dinners. And then as everything kind of locked down and closed down, we've actually moved to Zoom. We've had Bible studies. We've had different types of events. So it's been really cool to see how this thing has been developing and growing into something. Um, for those here who know of people who are in the age range of, you know, just out of high school, in early college, um, out of college, early 30s, if they know of a need and they, that person needs fellowship or needs to connect with uh, the age group in their age range, um, tell them to reach out to me. My number's on the slide. Um, all my, my, my cell phone, actually, you know what? You can contact me or contact the office, and they'll give you my personal phone number so that you can, uh, you can contact me there, email or phone number. But um, so yeah, so it's been a really cool time to uh, build community, and that's what we're trying to do here. So this today, actually, I wanted to come up here because today we're having a sort of a coffee hangout um, at an outdoor area in Costa Mesa. It's at the OC Mix. It's today at 1 p.m. For those who are watching or for those who know of somebody that wants to attend, just wanted to put it out there. It starts at 1 p.m. Just another time to hang out and enjoy each other's fellowship. So uh, yeah, I think that's it, Dana. Thank you so much, Austin. Very good. Appreciate it. Now go wash your hands after touching that microphone. <laughs> Keep everybody safe, you know. <laughs> trying our best. Absolutely trying our best. And then uh, want to uh, let you know we've been talking about uh, the uh, Shuva Yisrael Presents a Night of Worship. Guess what? It's next Saturday night. So we are excited. You guys are excited. And, uh, and uh, if you do come, the normal, the normal procedures uh, continue to be uh, in place, and that is if you're not feeling well, if you're sick, if somebody in the household is sick, especially with COVID, don't come. Watch it live stream. It's going to be live streamed. We are going to have to uh, have you check in. We'll take your temperatures. Uh, you'll be uh, required to wear a mask uh, at all times indoors, but we are going to have a wonderful time next Saturday night uh, for the night of worship. And then also coming up, the uh, last Shabbat of the month, uh, Saturday, March 27th, will be our Passover service at 10, uh, 10 a.m. And then uh, Rabbi Larry is going to do a uh, Passover Seder demonstration, which will be live stream only that afternoon, March 27th, at uh, 3 p.m. And then also for the last... Uh, for the last Sunday of uh, March, March 28th, Sisterhood will again have Sisterhood breakfast via Zoom. If you, if ladies, if you'd like to be uh, a part of that, please email the office so that you can get the Zoom invite. And with that, Jim, I'm done. All right, praise the Lord. Why don't we stand again, worship the Lord through song and dance. We get to put our hands together. Praise the Lord this morning.
with us, Him alone we trust for our peace. His love is forever, His mercy never will cease. He will set His resting place in our midst, extending His love and grace to all who are His.
prevail. Lord, over heaven and earth, God of Israel, come with your wisdom and power, hold in your honor and strength. Lord, hear the cry of our hearts, come on, come. Thank you. We praise your name. Adonai, we get to just come and worship you and praise your name. Thank you for this opportunity. We ask again that you would fill this place and speak to us. Speak to us now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Great. Could all be seated at home, here. I'm going to have a word of prayer for our children before they take off to their Shabbat school. It's all bowed together. Father God, we thank you again that we have such a wonderful building, congregation, place to worship you, Lord, that you've provided for us. So we, we thank you today that it's another Shabbat, another Saturday morning where we can lift our hearts to you as we can every day, but especially together as I see people just worshiping together, enjoying your presence so we commit this morning to you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you continue to bless Shuva, your congregation. We ask for you to 
guide and direct us so that everything we do would honor and glorify you. We pray, Lord, that you would bring peace to this congregation. We thank you that we can give. We commit our giving to you. Thank you for the gifts that you've granted to us and enable us giving back to you. So we thank you for Shuba. We also pray for America, Lord, for our country as uh, we need your help. We pray for our leaders, our president, our vice president, our house, our senate, our supreme court, Republicans, Democrats. Lord, we need your wisdom, your insight, your peace, your unity, and your salvation to spread throughout our land. So we do pray for the peace of America. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for the salvation of our Jewish people, that you might watch over our people worldwide, keeping them safe from the enemy, Lord, but opening their hearts and their spirits to the fact that Yeshua, their Messiah, has come and that he's paid for their sins so they may have a relationship with you. So we commit this time to you now, Lord. We ask for you to bless our children as they go off to their class, that you would uh, prepare their hearts to hear the words that you speak to them through the teachers. We thank you now for this time. We ask you to bless us in your word. Speak to our hearts, for we ask it all in Yeshua's name. Amen. And I'll ask the children and their teachers if they'd be dismissed. And all of you who are home, um, you should have an outline. You could download the outline. Here, we should have outlines. Open up your iPhones, pads, and Bibles, even your Bibles. A thing of the past. Unfor uh, I don't know if it's unfortunate, because we have Bibles in our phones. That's great. So this week, <clears throat> I went and did it, and I got the shot. I got the shot. I did. Arm was aching a little bit, supposed to be, but I got my shot this week. I feel good about it. And, uh, and now, I guess I feel a little bit safer. Um, I don't know, a little bit more relieved. I'm not sure how I feel, but I did notice then when I was at my CVS getting the shot, so I walked up to the woman at the counter, pay for something, and I said, so I don't need my mask anymore. She goes, no, 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 you need your mask. In fact, I looked at her and I said, she had two masks. And so I, not only did she have two masks, but she had her shot. And uh, she seemed like she couldn't even smile. You know, she, she was really, really uptight and nervous and scared. I, and, and then I, I realized there's, there's more people like that than, than we realize. People are really still scared, uh, even though things are seem like they, they might be getting better, and uh, we got the shots and masks. So, so I noticed she was, I said, maybe she's an exception. So then I had to go to my, my Verizon store for something with my phone, and I walked in, maybe a little rebellious, but, because as soon as they tell me to put my mask on, I just wanted to, I put it on right away. But, so I walked in without the mask, and he said something to me about the mask. I said, well, Texas, you don't need them. He said, well, this is in Texas. I said, oh, okay. I said, but I have the shot. He goes, oh, it doesn't matter. You can carry it, and we're sick. And we're, I, he was all tight and nervous. And so I, I, I realized uh, people are scared still. They're still not sure. Uh, mothers with children and families, there's a lot going on. Uh, we're still not out of woods. I mean, I think we are, but there's still a lot of f a fear and scared scariness going on and my and I, and I've been sharing on you know how should we live in this time of fear and uh, being afraid uh, are we afraid a lot of people are I know I, I was thinking back this week a couple times in my life I was really fearful uh, that, not of dying but there was a couple times uh, when I, I was fearful I remember when I was going back to school in uh, 1979, I think I was 31 at the time. Um, I'd been out of school for a little while. Now I was 31, and I chose to go to a school that was the mo one of the, probably the most difficult seminary, one of the most difficult seminaries in the world, one, certainly one of the best in America. And I was just afraid I couldn't do the work. I thought, maybe I'm biting off more than I can chew. I was a little, little afraid of that. And uh, uh, But 
but I over, tried to overcome my fears. I still went to school even though I was fearful and I was afraid. Um, and I was able to adapt and live with certain uh, principles in my mind. Um, a couple years later, uh, I was asked to speak at the seminary. And this was a uh, number of years later, I was asked to speak. Now this seminary, you know, one of my fears, those of you who don't know, those of you who are watching, is speaking. But then again, that's everyone's fear, isn't it? Uh, aside from death, I think speaking, public speaking, is the second biggest fear of, of all of them. So, so I'm, I'm like everyone else, so I was afraid. But then they asked me to speak at this seminary that I graduated, Dallas Seminary. With all the, the students there, they're, 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 you had to wear ties and jackets to school, and they knew all the Hebrew and the Greek, and all the teachers sat on the stage there, your teachers, with all their degrees from Oxford and all over the world, and I had to speak. I could say probably might have been the most fearful time of my life. And uh, I could have backed out, but I chose to speak there. And uh, I went, went ahead with it. I'm saying, what do we do when we're so fearful? Um, we could play it safe. We could back off. Or we could move forward. There are certain characteristics that we might try to strive for. When I was leaving uh, New Jersey, I was very comfortable in New Jersey. I liked New Jersey. I was almost 50 years old in New Jersey. I was very, very comfortable. In fact, I joked, Fan and I were thinking of retiring in New Jersey. Everything was good. We had a nice congregation. Everything was comfortable. Uh, my kids were all set. Everything was good. Then all of a sudden, God said to me, I think, through different circumstances, I think I want you to go to California. California? I can't go to California. I mean, those of us on the East Coast, we could take a trip to Chicago, but never beyond Chicago, not to California. To take up, pick up my life at the age of 50 and go to California? I could say I was a little concerned, a little... I don't know about if I was worried, but I, we, we did it. Um, one other last time, uh, back in 2007, while I had Shuvah, while we had the congregation here, some people asked if I would be the temporary leader in a congregation in L.A. They said, well, you could still stay in yours. We'll meet on Sunday. And so I, what I'm saying is that throughout life and times, even now, there are scary, difficult times. What do we do in such times like that? Um, I wrote down here, do we play it safe? I feel sometimes I like to play it safe. You know, don't ruffle anything, play it safe. Um, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to be embarrassed. Um, nothing, nothing great will happen if you play it safe. What's the phrase? Nothing ventured, nothing. I never know the second part of that. Oh, good. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I thought nothing ventured, nothing lost. Anyway, no, but... Um, so what do we do? How do we act in such times like this? Well, uh, I wrote down here a couple principles, a couple examples of people who lived with difficulties and have moved on with the difficulties. Um, I remember saying to someone that one of my great fears is speaking. And they said, what? You've been speaking now 50-some years, almost 50-some years, and that's your fear of speaking? They said, what do you do? How do you live? I said, well, I have no choice. God's called me, and you move forward. Well, what if you fail? I said, yes, you have no choice. And so I looked up a couple principles, a couple um, people, examples in the Scripture that deal with fear, and what do they do, and some of the characteristics that we should strive for, how we should live now, or how we should respond. So if you have your outlines, uh, I'd like you to just remember, in times like this, and we're still in those times, although I do think I see a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, in times like this, we should strive for qualities or characteristics of heroic men, and I'll add, I didn't put it up there, and women, oh, I better say that today, men and women of faith uh, in the Scriptures. We should strive for those different types of characteristics, those different qualities that they have. So I put down a couple examples. So if you have them, fill it in as we just want to take a look at a couple uh, men, maybe some women in the scriptures. First, we need to have, when you're scared and difficult, when scared, difficulties come upon you, we need to have the confidence. And you say, well, how do you get that confidence? Just drum it up? No, no, I'll tell you in a minute. We need to have the confidence that Caleb had. 
And I like when I deal with Caleb because uh, when I deal with Caleb, I see he had unbelievable confidence. We don't normally look at Caleb when we talk about uh, the scriptures. But I want you to look at the confidence that Caleb had in the midst of difficulties. And so if you're filling it in, I want you to just say first, the struggles that he faced. Who is Caleb? Some people don't know. Who is Caleb? Let me explain a little bit about Caleb. He's one of the twelve. One of the twelve. When God told Moses, uh, go into the land, and they came to him and they said, well, maybe we should send some spies in, look at the lamb, look at the fruit, the vegetables, the agriculture, look at the enemy, look at the, the, the mountains, the hills, the valleys, go in, send 12 spies. This was Moses, uh, uh, was going about to go into the land of Israel when they came out of Egypt. Send the 12 spies in, they'll survey the land. And the Bible tells us that Caleb was one of those 12. These are 12 great leaders. And so he was one of the 12. The problem was, he was still in the minority of those 12, as we're going to see in a minute. He was not one of the normal 12. Ten of the 12 were against him and Joshua. Ten of them were against him. So he had to face some scary things. He had to go into the lamb. And when he went into the lamb, what they saw was some scary things. They went and saw the lamb. And they saw that it was good lamb. But they saw that there were enemies in there. And I don't remember, I should have done this, I normally try to think about him, but there were all kinds of ites in there. Uh, but these ites were big ites. This was the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Gergesites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites. There's another one there, I'm probably forgetting. But all, Canaanites, there's all kinds of ites. These were big warriors in the land. This was no cakewalk to go in the land to consider it. Then, when he got there, he sees the different towns. All the towns were fortified with giant walls. And the enemy, this was a scary thing. He faced some obstacles. He was one of the 12. I guess they picked him for a reason, these 12. Um, he was up against not just all the people in the land, but later on, soon after that, one of the 12, he was up against 10 of his fellow uh, spies. The ten spies were also against him. The conditions of the lamb. The enemies were there. We have difficulties all the time. Difficulties as individuals. And you know, one of the things that, that strives, uh, that helps me to get along is I like to be different. Now my wife calls me a rebel, but uh, aside from being a rebel, I like to be different. I like to do a standout thing. I like to, uh, to do something that you, you have to almost know that God did it. And so... Caleb was one of those. He faced difficulties. We all have the difficulties. All of us. Um, we're all going through. Everyone, your difficulties are real, but they're all similar. People have job problems today. People have sickness. Um, they have children with their spouse. They have children, uh, tr trouble with children. Children with their finances. Children with their health. Uh, tr problems with their health. We all face struggles. What do we do? What do we do? What did Caleb do? Well, take a look at the, uh, what he did. I want you to see the struggles that the Scripture lists it for us. So Numbers 13, we see some of the struggles. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send out for yourself men, so they will spy out the land of Canaan. So Moses, now this was not on the other side of Jordan. This was when they first came out of Egypt. They were supposed to go right up into the land, uh, uh, into to the land of Israel. It only took a few days to get there, and God told Moses, Now go and take the land. So they said, sent out the spies to view the land. And he says, go look with the land which I'm going to give to the sons of Israel. You shall send one man from each of their father's tribes. Everyone will be a leader of them. So each of them, they pick out special. Twelve unique special leaders from the twelve tribes. So Moses then says, Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran at the command of the Lord, all of them, men who were heads of the sons of Israel. Then I purposely put the air from the tribe of Judah was Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. So Ju uh, Caleb was one of the twelve. We go on in the story. So they went up. They spied out the land from the wilderness of Zim as far as Rehob and Lebo Hamath. Really, well, I'll go on and tell you where this is. When they returned from spying out the land at the end of 40 days, they proceeded to Moses and Aaron to all the congregation of the sons of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. And they brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. So, just to let you know, they spied out the whole land of Israel from north 
near actually um, near Lebanon, uh, near Syria, near Damascus. They spied out all the land, came down through all the land. Um, this was some tour that you wanted. They, they got the fruit uh, in the middle of the land. They went south. Uh, they went throughout all the land. They came back to Moses after 40 days. And I picture the scene here. Moses saying to them, so tell me, report. Well, the report goes that the, all 12, all 12 said the same thing. All 12 said, the land is great. The land is a land of milk and honey. Look at these grapes. They're like grapefruits. They're so huge. They brought back fruit. They, they said, the land is incredible. Hills and valleys and streams and great fruit and those vegetables. It's a good, good land. They all brought back the same report. But then look what it says. Verse uh, 28. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong. Well, that happened to be true. These were giants. These were warriors. These were people in the land. So they said the land is good. The fruit's good. The vegetables are good. But we face a little problem there. And it says they're, they're strong in the land. And the cities are fortified and very large. Fortified, strong walls, large cities, strong people. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. These were like, like you might call giants, uh, maybe strong, mighty warriors who were known for their fighting. Amalek is living in the land of Negev. And the Hittites, here come the Ites again. They were fa famous for being brutal, strong, uh, wicked. Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites are living in the hill country. And the Canaanites are living by the sea and by the side of the Jordan. So now we see there are some difficulties that uh, Caleb is facing. But all 12 saw the same thing. The Jewish people were going to go into the land. God said go into the land. But when they came back, they said, we're going to face some obstacles. Walls, enemies, people. It, it looks like it could be difficult. But the men who had gone up with him uh, said, we're not able to go up against this people, for they're too strong for us. So now we find out that of these 12 spies, 10 of them, 10 of them said, we can't go up against those spies. It's too difficult. We can't go against the walls. There's no way to get through the walls. We find out later, that was no problem at all. God just blows them over. But the walls there, there's strong warriors there. We're going to be destroyed. We can't do it. Ten of the twelve, Caleb was one. So not only did he have to face the enemy in the land, he had to face the ten that now that went against him. And it says, um, but the man, they were not able to go against them, for the people, they're too strong. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report. Now the ten of them lied. They made a lie. They made a bad report. And they said, a bad report of the land, which they spied out, the land, uh, spied out saying, the land through which we have gone is, uh, in spying it out is a land that devours its inhabitants. Not true. So now we know ten of them were lying. They said, the land will destroy you. And the enemy will destroy us. They said, um, where was I? Oh, the devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are a great size. Tall, strong, mighty warriors. Not, not supernatural people, but they were warriors. Then it says, there also, there, there also, we saw the Nephilim. Now, there's all kinds of questions in the scripture who the Nephilim are, but it appears that the Nephilim were big, strong warriors. Not angels here. Uh, Nephilim, I don't even believe were angels in Genesis chapter 6. These were strong, big warriors and, uh, here. And they were, they were too strong for them. And we became like grasshoppers. In their sight. It's in their sight. It's like when I stand next to Austin, you know, and when you talk, talk you know, you, you look down, you say, I'm a grasshopper. You know, I can't imagine. I actually, there's a few times when I really saw I was a grasshopper. Um, I remember um, I was uh, in a falafel place up in Anaheim here, and there was no there. It was five o'clock. It was early. Fran and I were eating there, and uh, they, the owner came over to me. He says. Do you, uh, do you follow basketball? I said, yeah. He, and I, I, I said, yeah. He says, well, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is sitting over there by himself. So I went over to Kareem and, to introduce myself. But I was a grasshopper in his sight. I saw him sitting at the table, but his feet were at the other end going through the table. He was huge. I was once walking through the airport. I remember walking through the airport, and I saw this giant of a man. 
I found out later who he was, but, and he was from college at that time. He was playing basketball for Georgetown. And I walked up to him and I asked him, how tall are you? He's down here. How tall are you? He looks down at me. He goes, seven three. He wasn't from America. And I said, what? He goes, seven three. I said, okay, okay, okay. okay." It was a guy by the name of Matumbo. I was a grasshopper in his sight. I've seen big people like that. I was walking in New York City with my daughter, Rachel, and uh, we were about Times Square. And down at the other end of the block, I saw someone walking on stilts. But when we got down there, I saw he wasn't on stilts. He was standing. And that was a guy named Sean Bradley. He also played baseball. He was 7'7", I think it was. So we were like grasshoppers. I was like grasshopper. These people are tall. I wouldn't want to go against people. You walk up to someone from who's in the NFL football or basketball, you realize these are huge, huge people. I, I, I tell the story also. I went over the house of Muhammad Ali years ago, 1970, I think it was. I went over his house, and he lived near us in Philadelphia, and we walked in, and I saw this giant of a man. He was, his shoulders, he was so huge, six-something, but, but he was a giant. I can't imagine if I had to go to war against people like that. That's what these people are like, warriors. And it says, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. So he, he faced challenges. Listen, we all face challenges. How do you drum up that confidence, though, to go against them? Well, follow along. Then all the congregation lifted up their voices. They cried. And the people wept that night. All the, the ten spies lied. All the people started crying and weeping and saying, why did we come out of Egypt? This is no good. And he says, all the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, would that we had died in the land of Egypt. Better to die in Egypt than to die here in the wilderness. And these giants, we can't face these giants. Listen, we all have giants. All of us. We all have struggles. What does God want from us in this? To give up or to walk with Him? And it says, the congregation, they grumbled and said to them, would that we had died in Egypt or would that we had died in the wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become plundered. They're all going to die. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? And Joshua, Joshua the son of Nun, that's the other of the the two of the good spies, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, of those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. Caleb tore his clothes. But all the congregations had stoned them. Here's new, new, more, new problems. All of a sudden, not only are they going to take a stand, not only is he in the minority, not only are all the people against him, and all the people in the land against him, but now the ten spies are against him, and the people are thinking of stoning him. This man had problems. He could have played it safe and gone with the ten. Could have played it safe and gone with the people. He could have played it safe and not took a stand. And it says they thought of stoning him. And then God stepped in and appeared in the tent of the meeting to all the sons. We all have struggles and limitations. I like You think of Moses. Moses is a spokesman for God, but they don't know. They, not a lot of people say he stuttered. He had trouble speaking. He says, I can't speak. Now, I don't know if Moses was like me and scared to speak, or he stuttered, but he had a limitation. He, he couldn't do it. Gideon, I wrote Gideon. Gideon was, God spoke to Gideon, and he was hiding in a wine press. He was afraid of the enemy. And God said to him, Gideon, mighty man of valor. I picture him hiding. How'd that angel get in here? I'm not a mighty man of valor. Not only that, he says, I'm a small tribe. I'm I'm nothing. I'm just like a child. God speaks to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, go to the people. Go to the elders, the leaders, the priests, the prophets. Go to them. Jeremiah says, how can I? I'm a youth. I can't do that. God speaks, actually, David goes. David goes against Goliath. He's just a teenager. Now, Goliath was a giant. We all have those giants. How do we go forth with confidence? Um, I wrote here down, Esther. Actually, she was an orphan. She was taken captive. Uh, she, I mean, she lived with her, her cousin. And then she, God used her greatly. All have limitations, every one. 
I wrote down here also, Yael. See, I'm trying to get all the women in as well. Yael, just out there in the tent. And God used her to do something great. We all have our limitations. So what do we do with them? Well, when people say to me, what do you do when you're afraid to speak? Here it is. I go and speak. So wait a second. I thought you said you're afraid. Well, I am. So what do you do with that? You go. Well, what if they laugh at you? Okay, you laugh at me. You got to realize where your confidence is coming from. You got to realize that you're called by God to go. If you really trust the Lord, that's what Caleb did. His confidence. Find out, look with me, with the source of his confidence. Where did he get this confidence? We know all of us, we have to get that confidence. Not from our position. Not from power. Not from money. Not from, ma- from a, a spouse or a mate. We all are looking for something to calm us down. To give us that confidence. Nothing in the world can give you the confidence. Nothing. Because it could all be taken away. You might have great ability. Don't, don't, don't focus on your ability. I remember once speaking in a congregation. And I spoke seven times in Texas. And six of the messages they liked a lot. The seventh one was my best. And I said to myself, I said, wait till you get my seventh. I, was, I, I knew they liked the six. I said, wait till you hear my seventh one. I didn't say that to them. Praise the Lord, I didn't. But, and I said to myself, I was trusting in my ability, my own ability, because I knew I could do that message. So I did it, the seventh message. <laughs> flat, dead, horrible. I said, what happened? I don't understand. This is my best message. It just fell apart. Don't understand it. You know, three years later, they asked me back, and they said to do, a, you, you do new messages, but you could also do one or two of your others that you did. So I gave the one that felt flat on its face, the one that I felt so comfortable. So I prayed. I said, Lord, I don't understand. Last time I spoke, this message that I always do is so good, it fell flat on my face. I was so confident of it. And so I prayed and prayed and prayed, and I gave it. And it was wonderful. And I felt really strong and powerful. And after the message, you know, I said to God, I said, Lord, I don't understand it. Last time, it was no good. This time, it was very good. And I said, why is that, Lord? And he answered me. He said, because the last time you gave it, this time I gave it. Because my confidence can't be in who I am. It's got to be in the Lord. Here's the, the source of his confidence. It's not man. It's not circumstances. It's not situations. When, when, we, when things go well for us, we feel comfortable. But that's not where we should be comfortable. God has called us, and God is the one who goes before us. That's our source. Now, a lot of times, if I'm speaking or if I'm doing ministry, I'm doing certain things, and I get real nervous before, and I say, Lord, Lord, I, I'm real nervous. I need your help. You've got to help me through this. And I really spend a lot of time in prayer with the Lord. And afterwards, it's great. And I, I remember one time telling the Lord, Lord, I felt so good. This is so wonderful. I'm so thankful. You used me. You allowed me to speak. You allowed me to do this for you. I feel that you used me, and I feel very, very good about it. And I said, why, Lord, do you always lift me up? And the Lord seemed to answer me again. I don't hear voices, but he did answer me. And the Lord says, I'm always going to lift you up as long as you lift me a little higher. He's my source, folks, always. No matter what your fears are, no matter how bad it looks, we need to go to him. That's the source. That's what Caleb's source was. Follow along with me. Uh, Numbers 13, verse 30. Then Caleb quieted the people down. I, get the picture here. You know, they came back from the land. They came from the land. They said, the walls are big. The people are big. Um, everything looks difficult there. They're giants. Now the ten were against them. They're talking to stoning them. You know, as I was saying that, I also thought another person in the scripture, I'm not going to turn to it, I just thought of it. Uh, David, before he became king, And when Saul and all the army of Israel, everyone was hunting out David, it says David's own men turned against him and were talking about stoning him. I think it's in 1 Samuel about chapter 30. They were talking about stoning him. And then it says, and David strengthened himself in the Lord. Here's your security. security. It's not your job, not your money, not your situation, not your circumstances. You know, when they all go good, we all feel comfortable. But that's not what you want to get your source. 
We've got to get our source from the Lord. And it says, so then Caleb quieted all the people. He, quiet, he got out of the land. He got the ten spies. And he got all the people. Quiet down, everyone. I know what you're thinking. He quieted the people before Moses and said, we should, I love how he says this, we should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome it. Isn't that great? You see, here's the key. As long as you're walking with God and you're following Him and obeying Him and doing His will, we should by all means go up and take the land. Because God's my source. When I don't know where I might have put it here later. When you're walking with God, you can have great confidence. When you're not walking with God, you should fear. Because then you're on your own. And so you want to, just like Caleb, because God was his confidence. Look what he said. Look what it says in Numbers 14. With Joshua, Joshua the son of Nun, Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, of those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, the land which we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. Let's go. The land is good. It's been promised to us by God. The land is exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land flowing with milk and honey. It doesn't matter who is against you. It really doesn't. God has put us in sort of a bubble, folks. And then when you're walking with him, he takes you through life. Do things happen bad? Of course they do. God allows things to happen in our life, but God is in control. We can trust him. We can face our limitations and the struggles and the people. Go with the confidence of God. That's one of the prayers I have in the morning. When I also, I'm going to mention it again later, but I, all, I pray for really many things, but one I pray for is always, as you know, I pray for God's advantage. I need God's advantage every day. And then after that prayer, you know what I pray? I pray, Lord, give me your confidence. What does that look like? When I go different places, people seem to think that he can't be moved. He's strong. He's not necessarily opinionated, but he knows what he believes. He knows where he's going. He's confident. That confidence is not mine. That's not what I want. I don't want Larry Feldman's self-confidence. I want God's confidence. I want I want to feel that nothing can touch me unless he allows it. And I can trust him. That's the confidence I have in him. And that's the confidence I ask for every morning. Every morning. I, I'm not gonna go there. Uh, we read here, look what it says, uh, Numbers 14, 6. Only do not rebel against the Lord, people. Do not fear the people of the Lamb, for they will be our prey. There's nothing. There's nothing. This world can do whatever they want again. They're nothing. I go with God. Struggles, limitations, problems, doesn't really matter, folks. Well, you don't understand that, are you sure? God overcomes all things. You go with Him in the confidence. If something does happen, see, that's one of the things I do in the mornings. I commit the whole day to Him. Not only do I pray for advantage and His confidence, but then I go through my day with Him. I did it this morning. I went through preaching with Him. I went through the whole day, and I said, Lord, I want you to be in control of the whole day, because I need your confidence. And now, things happen in the day that I didn't plan on. I know God has done it. I've asked him to do that. And it says, uh, they will be our prey. Their protection has been removed from them. They're nothing. The giants, you know, the warriors, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. But God says here, I love this, but my servant Caleb, because he has had a different spirit, that's the spirit we want. That's the spirit you want. The confidence that you're going forth with God. Not in your own strength. Not in your own ability. Not in your own security. Not in anything you have. You're going forth in the strength of the Lord. It says, he's a different spirit. He's followed me fully. I will bring him into the land which he entered. And his descendants shall take possession of it. That's, where, that's what we want. We want God's advantage. We want God's confidence. His assurance not for man or anything else. If you do, this is where I put it down that I said before. If you do God's will, be confident. If you don't do God's will, fear. Go with God and He's with you. So we see, we all face struggles. We need the source of our confidence. Got to be in the Lord. And that you have to get every day in prayer. And finally, look at the patience and the timing of God's servants. 
Caleb patient and waiting for God's will and God's time. Now imagine Caleb wanted to go in the land and take the land, just like Joshua. But God said to him, not now. The people blew it. You blew it. Now Caleb could have said, I'm your servant, Lord. Why do I have to get punished with the people? Well, actually, when you see the people suffered, Caleb didn't. Of those 12 spies, those of you who didn't know, 10 of them died immediately. I think within the first year or so. They died. Only two. I picture if I was in there, I said, how did all those, of those 12, how come 10 died, but you two didn't? Now, they were suffering. They're not allowed in the land. God punished them. Said, you can't go in the land. All your people, all the people that cried out, all the people that said, no, we won't go in. God says, fine. I'm going to take all their lives before they go in the land. Next 40 years, I'm taking all of them. How come only two made it? Only in God's timing. God said to Caleb, I'll take you in the land. And Caleb had to trust and be patient and wait on the Lord. I could see him almost complaining. Well, I wanted to go in now. If they didn't want to go in, I'm... No, he waited patiently. He waited patient for God's time and God's way. Do you know how long he waited? Anybody? How many? 45. Not 40. It says 45. He waited. You'll, you'll see, we'll see here. Look at the patience. Uh, the, the patience, the timing of God. We need to pray... Seek God, His way, His timing, His will. God's will for you went in God's timing. He waited 45 years. Follow along. Joshua 14, verse 6. Then the sons of Judah drew near to Joshua in Gilgal. This is 40, well, we'll find out in a minute. 45 years later, the people are going to go into the land. The tribe of Judah comes to Joshua. And the tribe of Judah says to Joshua, we're going in the land now. It's 45 years later. Je- and Caleb says to Joshua, Joshua, you and I, we went in. Remember God said to me, where I put my foot, that's my land. I want this land in Judah. That's what, that's what he said. God's timing, God's will. And it says, then it says, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, uh, said to him, you know the word which the Lord spoke to Moses, the man of God concerning you and me. Remember? At Kadesh Barnea, how do you keep saying 45 years, Larry? At Kadesh Barnea, I was 40 years old then. I didn't say he waited for you. He was 40 then. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the lamb. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of his people melt with fear. But I followed the Lord my God fully, even in spite of the obstacles, the limitations, the giants, the difficulties. My confidence was in God. And I took a stand with him and you, Joshua. And it says, so Moses swore to me, Joshua, on that day. Caleb, speaking of Joshua. So Moses told me on that day, surely the land on which your foot has trodden will be an inheritance to you and your children forever. Because you have followed the Lord my God fully. Now behold, the Lord has let me live just as he spoke these, anyone? 45 years. From the time that the Lord spoke this uh, word to Moses, when Israel walked in the wilderness, and now behold, I am 85 years old. He waited 45 years. Patient, waiting, trusting God. I'm 85 years old today. I'm still as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me. And my strength was as my strength was then. So my strength is now for, uh, for war and for going out and for coming in. He was ready to do it. Joshua 14. Now then, he says, give me this hill country about which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day the Anakim, strong mighty warriors again were there, and and great fortified cities. Perhaps the Lord will be with me and I will drive them out as the Lord has spoken. It's it's, It's amazing to think at the age of 40, he felt strong. He was ready to go in and take the land. It's 45 years later now, he's 85. And I try to think of myself. I remember when I came out here in 1997. I was about 49 years old. And I remember someone in the congregation saying, I'm, uh, the, they we're going to start. They said, I'm glad you're here because we're tired. And at 49, I said, I'm tired. And I didn't know what to expect coming out here. And I remember God had given me strength then, but I was tired. It's now 24 years later. I'm still just as strong as I was back then. My strength, although I'm tired, but my strength is in the Lord. And he was ready to do God's will. 
overcoming all the obstacles. And he, and where he, say, he says, yeah. Uh, and I will, and he says, perhaps the Lord will uh, be with me and I will drive them out as the Lord has spoken. He persevered, he endured, he was patient, trusted, he was faithful, always doing God's will. That is the key. That is the key. Always doing and finding out what God's will is for you. That's why it's so important every morning to pray, to read, to obey, to seek Him, to worship Him. Find out what God's will is for your life. That's my definition of success. Success is finding out the will of God for your life and doing it. That's success in this world. Not, not a, a great kingdom of power, money or anything. Finding out God's will. He was confident uh, in, in the future. Caleb knew I can trust God in the future. Why? I've always said this. Because of his past faithfulness to me. You can be sure and confident of the future because God was with you in the past and he's going to be with you as you're doing his will. David did the same thing. Look with me in 1 Samuel chapter... Don't worry, we're not going to do the whole outline. Anyway, 1 Samuel 17. This is one of those we stop in the middle. Anyway, 1 Samuel 17, 26. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him. Uh, 1 Samuel 17, this is right about when, when he was uh, about uh, the boy, a teenager, he's going to fight Goliath. And he comes into the camp. There was Saul, and there's the Jewish people, and they're all here, and Goliath and the Philistines are over there, and Goliath comes down every morning and, and challenges the Jewish people every morning to, to, to fight them, and they're all afraid. And, they're, and then David comes into the camp to visit his brothers. He's the youngest. And he brings them cheese, and he brings them bread, and he brings them different things. And he comes to the camp, and Goliath challenges all the Jewish people. And Goliath, some people say, was nine foot nine. Uh, Mike Rodonik says he was six foot something, different time, and the people were smaller, four, I don't know. But I, I call him nine foot nine, nine foot nine. But anyway, so David sees this monster coming in, and the people run, they're afraid, scared to death. Nobody could face them. I mean, I can't imagine looking up at Shaq. I just can't imagine and me going to battle Shaq or something. I just can't imagine such a thing or that Matumbo or any of them. But David, he looked at them and all the people were afraid and started running away. David said, wait, wait a second. Wait. Who's he? He said, well, that's nine foot nine. We can't go against him. That's impossible. You see, when you think of things in the flesh, you think of finances, you think of sickness, you think of illnesses, you think of obstacles, you think of limitations, you think of all your problems, and we got them. But when you think of the way the Lord is, there's no problems, because he's bigger than all that. And so David looks at them and says, he's nothing. Now David had confidence in God because of what he saw God did in the past. Twice at least, it says, what God did for David. I think he stands in the midst of all the people and it says, then David spoke to the men who were standing by him, saying, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine? David, young teenager. And takes away the reproach of Israel. For who is this uncircumcised? He's nothing. I can't imagine this brass young teenager. Little red, I call him. Un, uh, who's this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? Who is he? David, get out of here. His brother said, go back to your sheep. What are you doing here? He says, your servant, David, himself, speaking of himself, I've killed both a lion and a bear. That's all we know about it. We don't know the, the count, how it happened, whether he took a stone and killed the lion, killed the bear. Well, we do know one thing he did. He did, he did we do know that he reached up, I think it was the bear, and the bear, he, I, you've seen the movies, don't you? how the bear gets up on his leg. I, can you imagine such a sight knowing your life is over? And David, this young teenage boy, reaches up and grabs his beard and pulls him down, and kills the bear. Now, he had to know he couldn't do that on his own. He had to realize God did something. I don't know if God allowed the bear to trip, smack his head on a rock, or David punched him. I don't know if he threw a stone at him. Who knows? But David knows one thing. I went against a bear. I went against a lion. They bared their teeth and their claws, and I killed them. The circumstance... Uh, where was I? Okay. Uh, oh, I went against a lion and a bear... And this uncircumcised Philistine, he's just like every one of them. Nothing. Except he's just a man. He's nothing. And uh, one of them, since he has taunted the armies of the living God, and David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, 
He will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and may the Lord be with you. Be confident with God when you're doing his will. That's what we learn from Cain. He is confident. We could have the, don't have arrogance. I'm not talking arrogance. I'm talking about confidence in God. One of the things we do in these times, when you pray and you're seeking God every day and every morning, you can go forth with confidence that you are walking with God. That's what we need in such times like this. The second one, we're going to look at the next three next time, but the second one, not only do we need the confidence of Caleb, we need the courage of Joshua. We'll look at Joshua next time, his fears and anxiety. But that's what we need as we go into such times like this. We don't know where the times are going to lead us. Someone said to us, listen, someone said, this last year has been amazing. We couldn't plan it. Just imagine, we could have the same thing next year. A new thing could come. Something new. It's, you know, God can allow it, but we can have confidence. It doesn't matter what takes place. It's amazing when I think of the calendar I saw this weekend. This weekend, this weekend, a year ago, was when my uh, pastor in Texas canceled his trip. I was already in Israel. And t- uh, tonight, I got the word that he canceled the trip and I was coming home tomorrow. And a year ago tomorrow, I came home. Landed on Monday, and everything that next week, this next week was confusing. And the next week, everything shut down. So where I'm glad, and people are saying, I'm glad we're over 2020. You never know. 2021 could happen again. But you can go with the confidence that Caleb had. Your confidence must be in the Lord. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for heroes like Caleb. And as we're going to see later, Joshua, Nehemiah, Baruch, we're going to see some great characters as they face difficulties, limitations, struggles, handicaps. Lord, it's nothing with you because our confidence is in you to overcome all these things. As we live for you, serve you, walk with you, follow you, Lord, and we can wait patiently for your way and your timing. For we ask all these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Okay, let's all stand. We want to conclude. I gave you a hint who else we're going to see. If you remember in that prayer just now. I said we saw Caleb. Next will be Joshua. Then I said someone else. Nehemiah. And then there's another character. Baruch. You don't even know him. Okay, we'll tell all about him. God, thank you. We ask that you bless us now. Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. B'shem Yeshua Meshichenu, Baruch HaBa, B'shem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In our Messiah Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.